Hey guys, welcome to something completely different. You are watching Bobcat Corner. And something that I've alluded to in a previous video of mine, at the very end of that one art video I made, where I was uh, hinting at the introduction of Bobcat Corner. And mainly what Bobcat Corner is going to be about, as a disclaimer here, is we're gonna be talking about college sports mainly about stuff related to college football but not just that it will be other college sports as well i'll put other college sports here and there probably basketball and other things like that but um as you can tell bobcat corner um i happen to be situated in the territory of ohio university athens and the team that calls uh, that area home would be the Ohio Bobcats. And they play in the Mid-American Conference, the MAC, uh, so better known as. And really the point of Bobcat Corner is just to have an open table discussion about college sports. And without further ado, here we go. Now, with this being the pilot episode, um, we're just going to get off and running here and this is not going to be a long discussion we're just going to start things off so obviously if you guys come to channels like this you know wanting to get more information about college sports uh you guys would already know that there have been many many and i do mean many things going on in the landscape of college uh, sports and in particular uh, college football and there have been a multitude of topics um, developing lately concerning uh, college football. Uh, if I can just be, you know, honest here, guys, uh, the landscape is changing. It's constantly changing. It's um, it hasn't been stopping from that change, as you can tell. And really, it's like so many things going on at once. We have the NCAA uh, basically going down the tubes, so to speak, with uh, multiple lawsuits. And they've been getting in trouble with the uh, United States Congress for a long time now. And more recently, that's coming to a head because they're just losing their lawsuits left and right, the NCAA. They're just they're losing their leverage, uh, legally speaking. And by the looks of things, guys, it's only a matter of time until the NCAA is no longer with us. And it's funny because this is like an organization that has been uh, instituting so many things. They've been um, enforcing so many uh, rules and, you know, banning, you know, banning universities and programs from doing such things or putting some sort of stipulation on them, you know, like slap on the wrist kind of penalties, you know, but here again, the NCAA themselves are in trouble. They're in jeopardy of losing it all. And honestly, by 2030, they're going to be doing just that. They're going to be losing it all. I believe the writing is on the wall for uh, the NCAA. They are losing their power. They're losing their influence. And it's pretty obvious to see. And uh, the whole thing with uh, Charlie Baker, you know, the NCAA president, you know, he's trying to save face. He's trying to implement something. You know, he recently proposed a change to um, the whole thing regarding uh, NIL, which is name, image, and likeness, uh, the NIL deals. He's trying to propose some sort of like, you know, tightly knit structure so that, you know, universities won't really like abuse it as much as they have been. But when you read the fine print of what Charlie Baker is proposing, it's just not going to hold any weight. At least in my opinion. I can't prove it, but that, that's just my opinion. I just don't think what Charlie Baker is proposing is going to fly with the majority of uh, institutions in the country. I mean, he may get the attention of some universities, but he's definitely not going to get the majority approval that he thinks. That's just how I feel. And... Um, Speaking of the NIL uh, issue, uh, 
if you pay attention to college sports and specifically college football, you would know that, you know, many universities, especially the big names like Ohio State, Michigan, and down south, you know, Alabama, you know, Georgia, all these kinds of schools, they are really um, utilizing NIL to basically the fullest extent. And they're recruiting all these uh, highly rated uh, high school, you know, talents, trying to get them to uh, join their football programs. And obviously, who wouldn't? But you can tell how this is having a domino effect on everything. The NIL has really played a significant part in really changing the whole landscape of college football. Like just a few years ago, when this was not a thing, you know the NIL thing, you know, wasn't even existence. You still had universities uh, going uh, underneath the table, so to speak, and, uh, you know, basically getting all these high school recruits, you know, paying them and, you know, enticing them enough to join their football programs. But now it's out in the open with this whole NIL deal. And you're seeing how all these universities throughout the entire country are utilizing it. Some more so than others, but for the most part, most universities are getting in on this because they want to stay competitive. They want to stay relevant in the public eye. And, you know, in the, case, in the cases of some universities, they still want to win games. They want to win football games. They want to be there in the national championship uh, conversation which is going to be another thing I'm going to be talking about a lot here on Bobcat Corner. And we will get there when we get there. But, you know, the NIL, you know, these paid athletes, these student athletes that are now getting paid, it dovetails into recent developments such as the Dartmouth case. Now, Dartmouth, that's an Ivy League university, and they just had a... Uh, court decision rule in their favor that, uh, yeah, their uh, student athletes should get paid and they're going to get paid. And that's significant because that will have a trickle down domino effect on other universities, not just in the Ivy League, but anywhere. And you're having like similar uh, legal disputes in USC, uh, University of Southern California. they're having their own issues, their own legal battles concerning NIL, you know, should student athletes get paid? Should they not, you know, it it raises the question about should student athletes, you know, be seen just as students or should they also be seen as employees? And my take on that is you can go either way with that. If you're going to just view them as students, then just view them as students. But if you are indeed going to go out of your way to pay these, uh, these young people, they're young adults, they're not kids, they're young adults. If you're going to go out of your way to pay these student athletes, then you can't just view them as students. You have to also view them as employees as well. So if you're going to speak in the language of their students, you also have to start utilizing the speaking of the language of their employees as well. There's a certain set of rules that you have to follow if you're going to be, if you're going to be treated as an employee. Okay. And that can be a double-edged sword. It can have its benefits, but it can also have its drawbacks. And I do wonder if these student athletes are even aware of those drawbacks, the other edge of that sword, you know, it remains to be seen. So if, you know, any student athletes, you know, watch this video right now, if they ever do, if you guys want to get paid, great. If that's really what you want, have at it. But just understand that there are responsibilities and there are certain rules attached to being treated as an employee, to to being treated as someone who's getting paid for their work. You know, and take it from me, you know, I've been a freelance writer for nine going on 10 years. And I deserve to be treated fairly, fair compensation. So just keep that in mind if you're going to go down this route. 
So also I want to get into um, the uh, Pac-12, which is now Pac-2 situation. Uh, I've been keeping a really close, uh, been really keeping a close eye on that. You know, the whole saga that started like, you know, halfway through last year, especially. Uh, really, the pack as a conference, guys, it's gone. The, the pack that you once knew is gone. Uh, most of those, um, so many of those uh, universities have just, have just, they've just abandoned ship. They've uh, joined um, other conferences. Uh, you have, for example, Oregon, Washington, USC, and UCLA. They all jump ship to the Big Ten. And you have, um, you know, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, Arizona State. They went ahead and they joined the Big 12. And you have all this uh, coming and going. And you only have two universities left, and that is Oregon State and Washington State. And they're left having to uh, deal with the remnants of what has been, let's be honest, a disaster. And, you know, in recent news, um, really the guy who uh, is really pulling the line, so to speak, for the remaining uh, PAC schools, which would be uh, Kirk Schultz. He is the president of Washington Univer Washington State University, you know. He has been getting into some, dare I say, controversy about how he's been handling his business. And that's been about having a vote for the college football playoff uh, structure. Everyone has been saying lately that, oh, yeah, we're just we're going to go right to a five plus seven model where it's just five uh, conference champions get an automatic bid and it's seven at large. That is the the proposed model that everybody else seeming, seemingly wants to go to. But here you have Kirk Schultz, you know, he's representing the pack, right? And, you know, he has to do what's right for the two universities representing his confidence. You know, the two rep representing, you know, universities of his conference, Oregon State and Washington State, he has to do what's right for them. Okay. And, in his eyes, and I don't blame him for thinking this, that, you know, it's not in their best interest for him to just simply give in to what everybody else is uh, proposing and just go to the 5 plus 7 model. Because I've said it in comments, and I'm going to say it here in this video, if Kirk Schultz does that, then he is basically giving in to what the masses are wanting. And if he does that, he's going to give up the tiny bit of leverage, and it is tiny, the tiny bit of leverage that the Pac-2 have left. As it is, they already don't have a automatic qualifying, you know, thing. They don't have the bid for the college football playoff. So keeping that in mind, you know, Oregon State and Washington State, they don't have a real path to get to the college football playoff unless they perform well on the field, you know, as an at-large bid. Unless they make it as an at-large bid, they're not really going to get considered, which is terrible, but that's how it is. That's the landscape that we're in today. So don't think for one minute that Kirk Schultz doesn't know that, okay? And I'm, and I'm, not, I'm not a Kirk Schultz fan by any means. Really, there's so many things that he's done that I don't agree with, but you know, in this case, in the short term, he's implementing a smart strategy. Unfortunately, many people are not uh, seeing it that way. But you know, you got to fight for what you believe in, and that is what I think Kirk Schultz is trying to do. He's fighting for what he thinks is in the best interests of his universities, and you, and in that sense, you can't blame him for that. So yeah. And speaking of the college football playoff, I have a loaded multitude of opinions regarding that and how much of a joke that I think that is. It's proven to be a joke. 
Um, I can go all day just talking about the college football playoff in general and, and just tell you guys how I feel about it. So many issues, so many problems, and so much controversy. Just ask Florida State about that. You know, I just have a lot of opinions, and a lot of it's not good about the college football playoff. I don't believe we have the right people in place for this so-called selection committee, and you can debate that all you want if if there should even be a uh, committee to begin with. Why should there be a committee? You know, I have a lot of questions about that, if we should even have a committee. Knowing what we know now about how these people act and how they arrive at their conclusions about, oh, this team should be in because of this, or this team this team should be in because we think of them this way. You know, you run the risk of going down a slippery slope when you do that. You don't hold all the teams uh, equally when you do that. You use certain metrics to view teams this way, and then you use other metrics to view teams that way. And you try to put them together, and it comes out to be one mess, one big mess. And it's just unfortunate that many people don't see it that way. They just don't see the slippery slope that it is. So that is more of what you can expect here on uh, Bobcat Corner, what I'm going to be talking about. And I'll be dedicating each topic to its own video, so... I'll get into more depth about it as we go along here. You know, the college football playoff, it's an invitational. It's a glorified invitational. And I have a lot of opinions about the Big Ten, the SEC in general, because I believe they have become a huge part of this problem, that they're dictating terms and that they want their own Super League at this point. They want to just control everything in the sport. And we're going down a dark path with that. If we simply allow the SEC and the Big Ten to just do that, we're in for a lot of trouble, guys. And, you know, I like the sport of football in general. I do. I've always have liked, you know, the sport of football, but I just cannot agree with what's going on behind the scenes right now. And I haven't for a long time. And. If you can see the writing on the wall, you would see that the Big Ten and the SEC are calling all the shots. They're at least trying to. And they recently formed this advisory board, you know, to give them counsel, special counsel as to what to do. You know, and you know where this is heading. You know, this is heading towards one big fat Super League where it's just Big Ten and SEC and nobody else matters. And I, for one, think that's a load of crap. So, anyway, there's a lot of stuff going on in college football. And for the record, I will be covering the Ohio Bobcats of the MAC and the developments that go on there. And it's a tricky thing to uh, handle because, you know, the Ohio Bobcats and you know, schools like that, schools like Ohio University, they're in this position where they're in a G5, group of five conference. And obviously G5 conferences, they just don't get talked about a lot for good reason, but they just don't get talked about all that much unless you go like 12 and one or 13 and 0 in a college football season. And then the mainstream media has to pay attention to you. But, you know, I'm always an advocate for a group of five uh, schools. So going forward here in 2024, I will be updating you guys on the Ohio Bobcats and what's going on with them. Um, I don't know how frequently I'll be doing this for the Ohio Bobcats or college football in general, but when it's time for me to chime in, I will uh, try my best to provide you guys with content. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, please provide comments and feedback. I appreciate it. And I'm really hoping to do more of this going forward. Take care. Bye.